Hi everyone, welcome back to my craft room. If you're new to my craft room, then welcome. Today we're going to do another simple, quick, easy peasy DIY. My favorite kind. Um, I found this sign the other day when I went to Dollar Tree, and I actually had a couple subscribers, because I said I had an idea for this. A couple subscribers had the same idea, so it wasn't just me. I want to turn this into a candy corn decoration for fall. I thought this would be really cute. Now originally I was going to try to take this off, and redo this side because it has this hook on the back, but you know what? It's going to be just easier just to unscrew this little hook and put it on this side when we're done than to try to get all this other stuff off. And then that way after Halloween or fall you can just flip this over and use this sign still if you want to. But that's what I'm going to do. So I need to take off this. Let me hold this up here in case anyone is wondering. Let me make sure that this is showing up. Um, they're just calling this decor. They have different ones. They had round ones and they had other shaped ones with different sayings on them. But I just thought this would be fun. I used to make little wooden candy corn ornaments uh, for craft shows many, many years ago when I used to do that. I don't do that anymore because it just got to be too, too much. Um, and like I always say, after you make them like 50 times, you don't want to make them anymore. But it was fun when I did it, you know. But anyway, back to the project. So, candy corn doesn't have a point on it like that, so I kind of experimented here, and it does sand off fairly easy. So, I'm just going around, I'm actually using one of these nail files from Dollar Tree, and just rounding off these corners so they're not so pointy like this. So, I'll do the other two um, off camera here, because, you know, it's not a pleasant sound to listen to somebody sanding. But, yeah, it is pretty easy. It comes, and you can just round those sharp corners off. And see, so you're really not even ruining your picture on the front if you still want to use it. So anyway, that's what we're going to do for these little pointy corners. I'll file that one off in a little bit here. So hopefully this little tag will come off nice and easy. Yay! That's always nice. Good. So that was easy. See? So far, easy peasy. I have my handy dandy little screwdriver set here from Dollar Tree. And it's just a little Phillips head screw in the back, which comes out really easy. And hopefully I don't lose that by the time I'm done here. I'm going to set that way over there. And then you can fill that little hole in if you want to. I think we can probably just cover that up with some paint. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that um, spackle in there from Dollar Tree just to fill that little hole in. And it won't be showing. Do I have it handy? Uh, yep, I do. Look at that. You don't have to do this. You could actually fill it in probably with just a little bit of hot glue, too. It would probably be just as simple. So anyway, I'm just going to take a little bit of the lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree and just put some in that hole just to fill it in a bit. It's a, not a very big hole whatsoever. But we'll fill that in. Let that dry. There we go. Yeah, I think hot glue would have probably even been easier because then you would have your immediately be done. Alright, so after I get that filled in, I'm going to paint this whole thing white. The only reason I'm painting the whole thing white first is because I think these orange and yellow will show up much nicer on a, a white background. So I'm going to be using this summer porch. It's called home decor chalk paint. You can use any yellow. Um, I have this burnt orange. Uh, this one's from Michaels uh, Craft Smart, and it's the premium chalky paint. And then I have so I have all different paints here. It doesn't matter what you use, whatever you have. Um, I have this white chalk paint from Waverly. So we're going to paint the whole thing with that white chalk paint first. Um, I'll just go ahead and paint on this side here just to show you. You guys all know how to put paint on something, but. I'm sure it's going to take two coats. Absolutely going to take two coats. I'm probably going to do the sides too. Because, I mean, if you want to keep this to use, you know, double sided, then you're not going to want to probably do the sides. But I'm not. I'm just using this for my little Halloween decoration. Um, so I'm going to paint the sides white. And this stuff covers really good. But it's definitely going to take two coats to have a nice bright white background like I want. 
So I'll finish doing that off camera. I gotta finish sanding off my pointy edges here with my nail file, which was really easy. I was surprised how easy that was. I figured it was gonna be a real pain, but it is not. And then I'm gonna give this two coats of this white chalk paint. I want to let that little dot there dry a little bit before I paint over it. And you could do this with a sponge brush too, it really doesn't make much difference. And like if you want to use acrylic, I'm just using the chalk paint because that's the one I have in the colors that I want. Um, if you want it to have more of a shiny finish, you can absolutely use acrylic paint on this too. I think it'll work just the same. But I do like the coverage that I always get with my chalk paint. So. Looking pretty good there with one coat, but definitely going to need two because I want this to be a nice bright, bright white background. So after I finish getting this all painted, painting all the sides here, and sanding off my other points, then we will come back and I'm going to use some painter's tape too to tape this off to do the different sections of colors because that's just easier, you know, the easiest way to get a nice straight line because my hand is not that steady. That's that. So let me just finish this right here and I'll stop yakking and I'll finish painting this off camera. <laughs> Alright, we'll be right back. Alright, I got my two coats of white paint on here and I took my ruler and I'm going to section this off because I want to make two candy corns here. So I just took my ruler and a little pencil here and I just divided this down here like this. Now make a nice straight line from this one right down to the bottom and then I kind of just curve that a little bit to give that a rounded edge. And then I just made these separations where we're going to paint white and then I believe it's orange in the middle and then yellow on the bottom. So I just kind of divided this off. This is a little bigger guy. So, you know, however you want to do it, there's no particular measurements here or anything. I just went straight across and made the lines with my pencil. And then I'm going to kind of erase most of this off just so I can see where the line is. I don't want to big dark line to have to cover up, but I can still see it. So that's all I did here, just to divide this guy up. Alright, so I'm going to take some of this tape. You can use regular masking tape too, it really doesn't matter. I just have this painter tape here. And I'm going to put that down this line here so I don't go over it. And my dog's out there scratching at the door. <laughs> Put that down there, and then I'm going to, the top's already done, so you don't have to do any more of the white, so then we're just going to do the um, orange here in the center, put that on my line there, and down here, that looks good right there, then I'm going to paint my orange in there. And then after that dries, I'll just take it off, this off, and then I will, you know, move the tape up and do my yellow at the bottom. So, let's just take, let's see, I'm going to need myself one of these little dishes here. I'll use this one, which is always risky with me, because I tend to stick my brush in the wrong color sometimes, so when I get too many colors in here, uh, Alright, so let's see, oh, I can use a bigger brush for this part. It's pretty big. So take some of this orange and then we're just going to paint this section orange. And I don't know if I want to go down the sides with this or not. But this is probably going to take two coats of this too. And when we're done getting all these colors painted on here, I want to make sure I'm not getting it down the sides there, because I really don't want to do the sides. You could, you could go down the sides with the color too if you want to, but I just want to do the fronts of these. So hopefully I won't get too much on the side. Anyway, after we get all these colors on here, we're going to make some goofy faces on these guys too. We're going to make these happy goofy little candy corns. I used to love to make those. Um, I sold a lot of those at craft shows 
many years ago with the little goofy faces on them. <laughs> They're just fun. Just a fun little Halloween decoration. Alright, so after that dries, we'll come back, move the tape, and we'll do the yellow, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll probably do that off camera just to save some time here. And, um, yeah, alright, so let me let this dry, get my second coat on there, and then we can move the tape. Alright, so I took the tape off of there, and we're just going to move it up and then cover this part here. Right up here, so we can paint this bottom part yellow. Hopefully that's in the right spot. That looks good. So this is just going to be yellow. And let's see, I need another brush. This is kind of a pale yellow, but I'm just going to kind of go with what I have here. I think this will work just fine now. And I'm going to do two coats of this yellow. Actually, this yellow is covering me very nicely. What color did I say that was? Oh, Summer Porch. I need to have a look-see at this. That's actually not bad with one coat on the top of that white. Maybe we'll just go with one coat of these, this yellow. I think that would be fine. Yep, I think that's going to work out just fine with the one coat. You know, it's much easier because we're painting over the white. Alright, so we're just going to take that off of there and let that dry. And then after this side dries, we're going to take this piece of tape, well, different piece, but another piece of tape here, and then we'll put it over on, um, it'll go over on this side and do the same thing with the stripes over here. You're just going to move your tape over over there. So I'll finish painting up this side just to get a little bit of a... I want to go around that little curve thing here with my yellow. Hopefully I get this without messing it up. There we go. Um, yeah, that's all it is. Just a matter of taping it off and painting it. And the little eyes I'm going to put on here, I'm going to show you real quick what I did. I just took a piece, actually it's an old piece of these mats and I just threw it on the floor, and I have no idea where it went. Um, here it is. <laughs> I'm on fingers. There. Anyway, I took an old piece of the... I use these mats until they're grody, and then I rip them up and use them for, you know, underneath my painting and stuff. So I just took a piece of one of these old ones here, and I just cut out this oval shape. Um, it depends what... My hands are covered in paint, sorry. Depends on what size you want to make their eyes. But I'm going to make these big, goofy eyes, so I want really big ones, so I just cut out this little oval shape, whatever shape you want to make them. That way I can get make sure they're all pretty much close to the same size when I go ahead and paint them on there. But i got to wait for this to dry now, and then I'll finish painting this side, and then we can get this little face on. Alright, this is all nice and dry. Now we're going to go in here with some stitching marks. I'm going to actually use a Sharpie for that. Um, when we're done to define these lines a little bit better. But we're going to take the little eyeball, the little oval here, egg shape almost, and I'm just going to trace them on here. Now you could try to do these before you paint the orange. Um, I've never had any luck doing that. I always end up getting orange on the eyeballs. And, you know, it's just... A little more work, I think, doing it this way, because you have to put a couple coats of white on here for the eye first. But, I don't know, in the long run for me, it worked out better. So whatever works out for you, you could do this first and try to paint around them if you want to. But we're going to put these goofy eyes on here. Let's see. And we're going to make a goofy mouth on these little guys. And then add some stitching, and that's it. And then put our little hook back on the back. Alright, there's his eyes. So we're going to paint them white, and then we're going to make it... I kind of... I don't know if I want them... I was kind of thinking about having them look at each other, but I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I think we're going to have this guy... I'm just going to make like a half circle in here for the eye. Now this part will get painted black. This is going to be white. Um...
like I said, no particular size, whatever size you want to make them. And I'm going to fade out these pencil marks before I start to paint, too. Just, oops, just to um, make it a little easier to cover. But this way you only have to part, paint this part here white and then get the other part painted black. So we're just going to get his eyes on here. And we're going to make a really silly mouth. This is just a fun Halloween decoration. You know, we did the skulls, we did the black pumpkins, and now we're just going to have some funny little decor. I mean, you could leave these up all fall. It doesn't have to just be for Halloween. And if you want, you could just move this little thing over here to make your half circle. Um, I usually just wing it here, but you could take your little oval and just kind of slide it over to do it. And then I just, you know, make it here. That one's a little bit bigger than the other ones, I think, but it doesn't matter. That's pretty good. That's what they look like before you paint them. It's just your little ovals in a half circle. And then for the mouth, I am just making like this little smileys here and they're just kind of bringing this down and make it a really wiggly smile. They're just fun. Um, you could do it however you want, but I just I'd love doing it like this. Just kind of bring it down, wiggle it around, and then you have your little goofy smiles. Alright, so we're gonna get started here. I'm gonna um, fade this out a little bit. So I don't have so much of this pencil mark to cover. There we go. And I'm just going to do this side here. Um, and then I'm going to do the other side exactly the same way, so there's no point of making you guys hang around and watch me struggle here to paint a straight line. I think I'm going to do the mouth with a Sharpie because I just am not the best at painting lines since my wrist was injured years ago. It just does not want to bend around like that and with the brush. So I'll leave that one darkened in for right now. I'll, I can erase that later. So we're just going to take some of this white and get that done here and see how good I can follow a line. Let's see, I need a small brush. Uh, yeah, we'll go with this. and. All right, let's see how much luck we have here. Not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> and this chalk paint covers pretty good, so I'll probably do two coats on here to cover up that orange, but like I said, it's just easier for me to do it afterwards and trying to work around the eye when I'm painting the orange on there. Is actually going much better than I expected. Alright, so get that part done there. Let me get my little eyeball thing out of the way. Alright. Oops, if I get it in the paint. Or if you don't want to do this at all, sometimes you can find cute little eye stickers at like Michael's and stuff and you could just stick them right on there. I am not the best at painting these little details, but we're going to see what happens here. <clears throat> and it's hard for you guys to see because my hand keeps getting in the way, but... Kind of got to keep this up close to my face so I can see what I'm doing. Alright, so let that dry. And now I'll go in with another coat of the white. 
and then we'll go back in here and paint. That'll probably just take one coat of black. Where is my black? Um, here it is. It's just the rich black home decor chalk paint. I'm going to go back over that with. And uh, yeah, for the mouth, I'm just going to, I can do that right now. Get my little Sharpie here. Um, I don't know if I want one of these skinny Sharpies. I might want a wider one. No, that might work just fine on here. So I'm just going to do this. As long as I can follow my lines. There we go. That little smile there. Little smile up there. And then just follow my lines here. If I can do this from this distance. I don't know. I might go over this maybe with a thicker marker. I don't know. We'll see what we think when it's done. I don't know. I might go over that with a thicker marker. I'll have to find one. But then that might be too thick. I don't know. We'll see. Let me get the eyes done first here. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to um, just paint this part here with the black, the other half of that little eye. And then I'll show you how I highlight these little eyeballs. Alright, I got the eyes on here. I finished the one up here. Um, and I'll show you what I did. I just put some little highlights in its eyes. And I did actually change it up. I, the first marker I used was a ultra fine marker. That was just too small. So we're not going to use that. Um, and then I found one of my, and this is a fine point. I mean, it's kind of a, a bigger point. But it made a big difference, and I think it looks a lot better. And then I just traced around what I drew for the mouth. And then I'm going to finish putting my stitching on here. And I think that just kind of finishes it all off really nice. Uh, I'm going to do the stitching first, and then I'll show you how I did the eyes. There's nothing to it. It's really simple. But I just went up here where I had that line to divide these two little candy corns and just make some dashes like that. Uh, there's no way for me to do this without my big old hand in the way. Um, but I kind of got to hold this up close here so I can see what I'm doing. But, you know, just little dash marks. There's nothing special about it there, but it just really finishes the whole thing off. And I just went around the edge with it. Really easy. The hardest thing about this is just waiting in between while your layers of paint are drying. But other than that, it's really simple to make, and I think these are just the cutest little guys. And if you wanted to add some raffia to this or something, you could do that too. Um, I don't think I'm going to. I made a raffia bow. I'll show you what it looks like. But I think I'm just going to leave these guys plain and hang them up the way they are. Alright, I'll flip you back here. I just need to put a few more right across the line here that I did. A few little stitch marks. Like we just sewed these guys all together. There, and I think that's it. I think I got all the little stitch marks in. Alright, and now for his little eye, I just got to finish that up. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to put this hook back on here. Um, I flipped it over and I made a little hole here because it has to be offset like this. Otherwise, it, if you put it in the middle of these two, it's going to hang sideways. So you kind of got to go from where it was on the other side. and I just marked there where I'm going to put the little screw back in. Um, so that should be fairly simple. Let's see how simple. <laughs> Let me grab my little screwdriver back out of here. So we're just going to put that right back in that little hole. And we'll have our hanger back on. I'm hoping that's not going to show too much from the front, but that's kind of where it was on the other side. So I figured I may as well go with it. And these screw in really easy. It's just that MDF. And yeah, you're going to see that a little bit from the other side, but that's okay. Um, I want it to hang nice and straight. So I'm pretty sure, yep, that's going to hang this up nice and straight. All right, so there's our little hook back on there. That's real simple to do because that stuff is really easy to screw into. Um, 
Now we'll put his little eye on. I'm going to need a teeny weeny brush, just a little brush. And let's see, some of this paint here is drying up on me. Let me see if I can get some of this to soften up here a little bit. There we go. Let me mix it around. I should have gotten it back in the bottles before. But, you know, you don't think it's going to take as long as it takes sometimes. But like I said, it's just a matter of waiting for your paint to dry. These are not hard at all to make, and I think these are adorable. Alright, so you're just going to take a little paint on your brush, and then I just... Um, let me hold them up here. Maybe I can do it better so you guys can see. I just make a round dot here and another one over here. My paint's very thick, but we're going to use it up. Alright. Flip you over. Okay, that looks like a heart. Alright. And if you want to seal these, I mean, if you want to put like a clear coat on these, you have to be really careful if you use the Sharpie. I found out through experience many years ago when I used to make these guys. Um, I used to just make the single ones. I didn't make like a double one like this, but I used to make a single one and just hang it with some raffia and stuff. And it was really cute. But if you want to put a coat of spray paint, like a clear coat over top of it, just do a very, very light coat really fast and let that dry. That way your marker won't run because if you try to spray it real heavy the first coat your marker will run all over the place but like I said I just take it go real fast just a light coat let it dry seal that marker in and then you can go ahead and give it another coat once that dries of your um, sealer if you want to do that. But I'm not going to do that with these guys these are just going to be a cute little decoration I'm going to hang up here in the house and then you just kind of make like a little comma and that's it. That's all I do for these guys' little eyes. Yeah, I don't know what they're looking at, but they're looking at something there. <laughs> what are they goofy? I love these guys. If you wanted to make this to stand up, you could put some of those tumbling blocks and glue on the back of this and just have these guys stand up, you know, if you wanted to put it like in a kid's room or whatever, on a dresser. And if I want to fix these eyes up to make them look even a little bit more uh, polished there and not such a wonky line. You can take a sharpie and just go around the edge of your um, black mar or your black paint there and it kind of you can kind of get that to look a little bit neater. Get rid of some of those wonky lines that I have. Unless you're really good at painting. I am not so I kind of have to go back and touch these little things up. But that's fine. It's just a cutesy little decoration here. I'm not going to stress out the little teeny imperfections. But there, that's it. That's all I'm going to do with these little guys. Um, I just thought these would be fun to do. I haven't made these funny face little candy corns in probably 15 years since I used to make them and take them to craft shows and things. But I'm going to hang this little guy up and I'll take a nice picture of him. And um, i hold him up here so you guys can see them. Aren't they cute? So, I thought this would be fun. Just something fun for the Halloween season. Or they're just for fall. You can mix this in right in with your pumpkins and your hot chocolate or whatever you're doing. But, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm going to hang this up, take a nice picture, and I will see you guys all next time. Have a great day, everyone.